In this video, we'll demonstrate a fairly complex example of using list controls on a UX component where the list controls are set to populate ca in a cascading fa fashion and also where we have form controls that are populated by making a selection in the list. So you can see here we have a UX component with two list controls displaying data from the Northwind sample database. The first list is showing me all my customers and the second list is showing orders for a particular customer that is selected in the first list. So you can see that when I go and make a selection in this list, in the first list, the, uh, the customer list, that the order list automatically updates and furthermore uh, when I make this selection here the uh, form on the right hand side here is updated to show the details of the current row in the order list and then if I navigate through the order list basically this form is updating and if I use the navigation buttons over here I can navigate through the data as well and the corresponding row in the uh, form uh, automatically updates. Furthermore, if I make a selection from this drop-down and for example go and there say choose that customer B-L-O-N-P and then hit the set customer button you can see focus goes to that row the child list automatically updates and the form gets filled in automatically so there's quite a lot going on here and let's go now and take a look at how this was all accomplished so let's go back to design mode and let's start out with the uh, customer list here so we have a simple list control that is being populated from the Northwind uh, sample database we're getting data from the uh, customer table and the field list in our query is customer ID and company name. We've set the uh, list to return the primary key and um, so we've set the return type to be primary key and we've set the actual primary key value to primary key. Then also let's just look over here we've defined an argument and we've defined an argument called what customer and we're going to set this value of this what customer um, argument to the value of the list control so you can see we've got curly bracket list customer over there so that means that whenever the user uh, clicks on a row in this list we're going to be updating the value of that argument so that's the parent list now let's take a look at the child list which is list orders so we'll go back to design mode there and we'll look at the query so again this is coming from the Northwind sample database this time we're doing a query against the orders database but when we go and look at our filter we can see that we're filtering on customer ID equals and then there's the argument uh, called what customer so we're only going to basically populate this child list with records where the customer ID matches the value of the customer ID in the parent list and then also obviously we've specified that this list has a parent and that its parent is uh, the customer list so this is all that was necessary in order to get this cascading behavior so when I click on a row there you can see that this value there updates automatically when I click on another row in the customer list the uh, child list automatically updates but now um, when we go now and we choose a value over there for example and then say set customer uh, we need to uh, force this child list there to update so if I go for example there and choose elf key and then say set customer we can see that not only did we set the value in the parent list but we also forced the child list uh, to update as well so let's go look at how that was done so looking here at this button that does set customer we can see that that's calling a JavaScript function called set customer and now let's go to our JavaScript so go to JavaScript functions and here is the set customer function so before explaining this let's pause now and pick this up in the next video so we're continuing our discussion now of uh, the uh, set customer function so we can see that the first thing that we're going to do over here is read the value in that drop-down control so if we go back to controls we can see that this drop-down control is called customer so the customer now is the current value in that customer control I'll just put a semicolon there then we're going to set the value of the list control to the customer so uh, because the list control was set to uh, return the value of the primary key if we set the value to a primary key value that will cause the current row in the list uh, to be selected based on customer ID so 
but simply selecting the value in the list doesn't automatically cause the child uh, lists to refresh. They do refresh automatically if you click on them, but if you set them programmatically, so you can see if I were to go here and temporarily comment out that line of code over there and go back to my uh, component, if I click on a row, you can see that the child list automatically updates. But now if I go here and I choose ALF key and then set value, you can see we set focus to that row, but the child list there didn't um, update. So we need to also go here and tell the UX component to go and refresh all cascading lists that are parented by the customer list. So if there's more than one list that has the customer list as the parent, all of the child lists will be updated. So this is the line of code that forces the child list to update when the set value when I go here and click this uh, button over there. So you can see now that as soon as I click this button we set focus to this row, we refresh this row and now this data over here gets populated. So now let's talk about how this these controls over here get populated when the user makes a selection in this list or navigates uh, one of these buttons over here. So we'll go back now to design mode and uh, I'm going to go now to controls and I'm going to look at uh, JavaScript actions. So we'll go over to properties and uh, we'll scroll down here to uh, JavaScript actions and I can see that one of the actions that we've defined here is called populate form. So let's go look at that. So this is the populate controls in an unbound UX component. So this is important here. We've not gone to the data binding section over there to bind this UX to anything. It's a completely unbound uh, component. So therefore, we need to use the action that works on an unbound uh, component. So we'll open up the builder here. And we can see that uh, we're going to get the primary key for the record to fetch by reading uh, values from a control on the UX component and then we're going to go here and uh, we're going to specify that we'd like to read the primary key from the list control from the order ID column in the list control and then uh, this is the connection string to our database we're going to populate the data from a table from the orders table and that the primary key of that table is order ID then here's our data binding so we'd like to go and put data into the order ID control and the order date control on the UX component and we'd like to get that data from the order ID field and the order date field in the target table, which would be the orders table. So this is how we specified um, the uh, how to populate those controls. So now we have an action called populate form. And let's go back to controls now and then go back to our list over there and then go to our list properties. And we would like to populate the form every time the user clicks on a row uh, in the list or a value in the list is selected programmatically. So we'll go back to list properties here and we can see that we've defined an on select event that is actually going to go and populate those controls. So before we uh, explain uh, what's inside this on select event, let's pause and pick this up in the next video. So we're continuing our discussion of the cascading list control and before we talk about the uh, on select event, I just want to point out one additional property over here, which is the allow uh, null selection property. So you can see here that this has been turned off. I'm going to temporarily turn it on. So now if we go here and we run the component, we can see that when the child list is uh, rendered, it has the correct records in it, but there's no current selection. So you can see that no no row in this list is selected and therefore because no row is selected the form on the right is not displayed. It's only when I click on a row in the list that the form on the right is displayed and also is populated. So by going back to properties and uh, setting the allow non null selection to false now what happens is when the child list is rendered, we're going to go and automatically set the uh, first row in that list to be the selected row. So that's why uh, when we initially rendered this uh, component, there was a current selection in this list and also this form was filled out and, uh, and populated. So let's go back now and take a look at the uh, on select event. So here we have the on select event and we can see that um, 
first we're doing is we're setting a flag called show container to false. Then um, we're getting the row number that is currently selected. So you can see uh, if we look here in the help, we can see that uh, it's telling us that this is a pointer to the list object itself. And this dot selection would be an array of all the selected rows. So uh, since this particular list only allows one row at a time to be selected, uh, this dot selection zero gives us the row number of the row that was selected and um, this dot underbar data is an array of all the data in the list so this dot underbar data dot length gives us a uh, number gives us the number of rows in the list so if the row is undefined it is not undefined and also if the row is less than the row count and the row is more than minus one then we want to go ahead and uh, populate the form. So now we're going to go and say show container equals true and then we call the function that populates the form and the only tricky part here is that we actually need to wrap this in a set timeout um, so that we avoid any timing errors when the, f uh, when the list is initially um, opened. If you don't put this in a set timeout you're going to run into a, a, a timing error but the timeout delay is just set to zero so this just basically lets um, the JavaScript complete its work initializing this um, list control before we try to do anything uh, before we try to read values out of it so um, the only tricky part as I mentioned is this little set timeout over here so then um, if uh, uh, these two conditions is true. In other words, the row, the row is less than the row uh, is is less than or equal to the row count, and uh, is greater than minus one. Then we want to show the container. Otherwise, we'll be um, hiding the container. And then uh, you can see that after we've gone and we've populated the form, we execute this code here, which either does a show container or a hide container and this these two actions again were defined using JavaScript actions so let's just go here and edit those actions to see what they do so hide container if we bring up the um, action JavaScript builder over here is simply calling the toggle display of a container and the container that we'd like to hide is container 3 and then similarly we have another action called show container. If we go back to our controls um, we can see that the whole form on the right hand side is wrapped in a container called container 3. So now you can see that we've described um, all of the uh, interactions between the various controls here to get this uh, behavior and then we can see this is navigating. When we navigate past the end then there's no current selected row here and the form disappears until I, the user clicks there to select a row. So this is a, uh, a fairly complex example of cascading lists in a UX component and then how uh, controls on the UX can be dynamically populated even though the uh, UX itself is not data bound. Thank you very much for watching.